dog SCPs. The normal blended with the paranormal is common enough in the SCP universe, so it's no surprise at all that there are quite a few anomalies based off of canines, ranging from the wholesome to the horrific. For the most part, I'll be looking at the more wholesome side of things today, and the only thing that these SCPs really have in common is that they're about dogs. This is just a smattering of some of the more interesting dog SCPs that I've picked, but there are dozens across the wiki. Let's start with an especially loyal dog, SCP-1111, an entity that visually appears like a mix between a Labrador Retriever and a German Shepherd. Alongside it is another entity, this one a man hanging by a noose from a tree, constantly twitching and jerking in a manner consistent with someone being hanged. Most of the anomalous effects have to do with the distance between these two entities. The further away the dog is from the man, the stronger, faster, and larger it becomes. Its fur and eyes also glow the farther away it becomes, and at distances of over 500 meters away, it becomes translucent. The man's jerks and gasping noises will decrease in intensity the further away the dog is. When left undisturbed, the dog will simply lie beneath the man with its eyes open, seeming to never sleep, eat, or even breathe. If any person or object approaches the man, however, the dog will immediately become hostile and attempt to destroy the offender. It's quite capable of doing this, able to run in excess of 60 kilometers per hour, jumping 6 meters into the air, and biting through 15 millimeters of titanium. No attempts to neutralize the dog have been successful. During an incident in which the Foundation attempted to approach the man and personnel were attacked by the dog, footage shows the man's lips moving, mouthing the words, No, down boy. So far, the Foundation has decided to simply isolate the two and leave them alone. They did manage to spy the tag on the collar around the dog's neck, which simply reads, Loyal. Not quite as touching, but exceptionally odd, is SCP-2952, a Welsh corgi that happens to be over 30,000 kilometers in length. The head and front legs of this entity stick out in Portland, Oregon, while the rear end pops out in Japan, with the body weaving through the Americas, Europe, and much of Asia. The dog doesn't seem to age, or require food or water, and will quickly regenerate from any damage done to it. At certain locations throughout its body, small openings will occasionally appear at regular intervals, upon which tiny humanoids will enter or exit the holes. These humanoids cannot be seen directly, only through photography or film. These hole formations do not seem to bother the dog whatsoever, and the humanoids are apparently using the interior of the dog to travel great distances. The holes appear in a number of major cities across various continents, as well as suburban and rural locations. Entering a hole from the left side of the dog takes these passengers east, while the right side takes them west, at about 120 kilometers per hour. The Foundation apparently wasn't happy with this predicament, so they worked to bury all of the exposed portions of the dog's body, preventing the humanoids from entering the holes. Three days after this project was finished, the director of the project disappeared from his apartment, with an adult European mole left in his place. Additionally, over the next three weeks, 17 of the construction workers involved in the project found the walls of their homes replaced with a mix of poison ivy and death cap mushrooms. A researcher, who had been in charge of testing the regenerative properties of the dog, woke up one morning with poisonous berries in his mouth and stakes of hawthorn driven through his hands and feet. Even the Foundation could figure out that these actions were being perpetrated by the tiny humanoids, and surprisingly, rather than going to war with them, they worked to appease them, by uncovering the portions of the dog that contained the holes and monitoring them. If a hole was still being uncovered, a plate of fruits, 
milk, nuts, and wildflowers would be left nearby, with a note written in Welsh stating that they're sorry for the inconvenience. The dog is appeased by regularly being pet by Foundation personnel. Two weeks after working to uncover the holes, the mole disappeared from containment and was replaced by the project director, and the poisonous walls were removed from the homes. The injuries committed to the researcher still remained, but, I mean, he was hurting the dog. Sometime later, the dog became invisible to all humans not working for the Foundation, and the humanoids became visible only to Foundation personnel, so the entity has now been reclassified as safe. A few days later, a bird left a note written in Welsh on the desk of the project director, thanking the Foundation for their wonderful customer service, and granting them complimentary transportation on their CORGI system. They should send a sparrow to the nearest council of the SHE office if they have any further questions. The note was written by G. Foxglove, the director of transportation for the council of the Tulwith Teg, the Welsh term for fairies. Let's look at a couple of Russian dog SCPs, coincidentally. SCP-4062 is a male Ukrainian shepherd dog that appears to be largely normal in appearance and properties, aside from a lack of aging, except when wet. When wet, the dog will shake continuously until dry, and the intensity of this shaking increases depending on the volume of liquid surrounding it. If fully submerged, the dog's shaking will boil water at standard pressure, causing the water to eventually boil away and the dog to become dry. During this process, the dog requires no oxygen or sustenance, and can handle an immense amount of pressure and temperature. If 4062 is unable to bring the surrounding liquid to a boil for some reason, it will shake indefinitely. This was the original containment procedure for 4062, but the ethics committee ruled that it would be better for the dog's emotional state to simply feed and interact with it normally. 4062 was acquired by the SCP Foundation after capturing a Soviet attack submarine in 1983, after hearing reports that the submarine crew were infected with some sort of anomalous substance. Although these reports turned out to be false, they did discover that the submarine's reactor was of no known design, instead containing SCP-4062, which was generating steam to power the reactor's turbines. The only one on board the vessel who knew about 4062 was engineer Andrei Alexandrov, who was officially listed as a naval nuclear engineer, but personally insisted that he was a canine engineer, and a graduate of the Moscow Engineering Physics Institute canine physics and engineering program. These claims remain unsubstantiated. The rest of the submarine crew were given amnestics and sent back home, but Andre remains in Foundation custody. So far, no other information gleamed from agents embedded in Russian governments have confirmed other canine engineering projects, and the Foundation has been unable to reproduce 4062, which Andre insists is a normal dog. In an interview with Andre, he claims to have no idea what the Foundation means by the word nuclear, and says that the submarine he was on was of the sheepdog class, powered by a standard canine water boiling reactor. He's surprised that the Foundation has no idea about the canine reactor, as canine technology is the root of Russia's tensions with America, including canine bombs and canine missiles. When the Foundation researcher asks again how a dog can boil water, Andre sighs, grabs his notebook, and says that it's basic physics. That was a somewhat humorous one, but the next one, not so much. In 1957, in the midst of Russia's space program, Khrushchev ordered that a spacecraft would be launched into space on November 7th, the 40th anniversary of the October Revolution. The goal was to deliver a spectacular mission that would repeat the earlier triumph of the Sputnik 1 the first satellite launched into orbit. It was decided that a single animal would be sent into orbit for the first time, a dog. 
The dog chosen was named Laika, a stray from the streets of Moscow. The vessel, Sputnik 2, successfully made it into Earth's orbit, with Laika inside. A number of hours later, though, the interior of the satellite overheated, and Laika died, thousands of miles from home, alone. That somber note brings us to SCP-2624, an artificial satellite composed of 60 live dogs in a roughly spherical shape 5 meters in radius. 2624 is believed to be located around the remnants of Sputnik 2 in orbit, and each dog is an adult female visually identical to Laika. According to this document, over the course of several hours after Laika's death, these dogs began to appear around Sputnik 2, and several days later, Russia contacted the Foundation to notify them of the situation. It's believed that the creation of 2624 was the result of a malfunction within an anomalous communication system that was meant to be secretly tested during Sputnik 2's mission. Whether the project malfunctioned because of Soviet error or sabotage by the US is anyone's guess. The dogs that make up 2624 can be seen twitching, panting, and breathing, but do not otherwise move. 2624 as a collective is capable of ejecting dogs at velocities exceeding 10 kilometers per second. It seems to use this capability in order to alter its orbit and counteract orbital decay. It then later creates new dogs to bring the number back to around 60. It will also move in this manner to avoid making physical contact with other vessels, making capture difficult. Other phenomena have also been noted, connected in some way with 2624. Around 80% of people who have traveled to space since 2624's creation have reported intermittently hearing faint noises similar to dogs barking. 40% of people who have traveled to space have reported vivid dreams in which a dog or group of dogs that look like Laika attempt to explain the workings of unidentified complex machinery to the dreamer. Since the dogs don't have vocal cords or opposable thumbs though, this results in the dogs primarily biting the machinery and barking. Also, on at least three separate occasions, live dogs identical to Laika have appeared in space or on celestial bodies. The first of these was in 1961, during the first Soviet manned mission to space. The pilot, Yuri Gagarin, reported seeing a single dog floating just outside the porthole of his ship. The dog placed its paws against the porthole and tapped on it rhythmically for several minutes, before floating away. The second occasion was in June of 1965, during the Gemini 4 mission launched by NASA. During a spacewalk, a malfunction in a maneuvering unit caused astronaut Edward White to be thrown unexpectedly around the spacecraft. White's crewmate attempted to reel him back in, and reported seeing a dog identical to Laika in front of him. He then felt a distinct force pushing on his back, maneuvering him towards the hatch of the spacecraft where White was recovered. The third occasion was in November of 1969, on the surface of the moon during the Apollo 12 mission. While out walking, astronaut Alan Bean noticed a dog identical to Laika in the distance, running in a small circle. It then ran over to Bean, sitting and looking at him from several meters away. When Bean turned away for a moment and turned back, the dog was gone. A potential fourth occasion might have occurred on February 20th, 2000, in Moscow. Moscow city police reported finding a dog similar to Laika whining loudly in front of the grave of Vladimir Yadovsky, the scientist who led the Sputnik 2 program. When a police officer attempted to shoo the dog away, they became surrounded by a mob of identical dogs. As they barked at the officer, they each began to hover in the air before vanishing in a flash of white light. It's overall unclear what exactly is going on here, but it does seem that Laika is living on in some sense, and that's alright. Finally, let's bring things back around to the connection between human and dog, with SCP-2420. 2420 is a man named John, 
whose anomalous ability turned any dog that he was aware of or was aware of him into an identical copy of his former pet, a Border Terrier. These copies take on the appearance, mannerisms, and memories of his pet, and are not harmed in any way by the transformation. When moved back outside of John's area of influence, the dogs change back to their normal forms, again painlessly. The transformed dogs are completely invulnerable to any form of damage, to the point of being unable to have their fur cut off, and have no need for water or food, although they will eat whatever's presented to them. In an interview with John, it's clear that he has some issues, but he insists that the Foundation can call him whatever they want, but they should refer to his former pet as Maddie. He had gotten Maddie from a neighbor shortly after his parents had both died. The neighbor's dog had mated with another Border Terrier and had a litter they were looking to get rid of. John noticed Maddie right away, a bit of a bully compared to the other pups giving him the sense that she had no patience for the other dogs. When he came over, the others jumped up to see him, but she came over last and stared at him. He held his hand out to her and she bit it gently, so he knew he had to take her. According to John, she didn't exhibit any anomalous traits while she was alive, and if he thought that she was actually magic, he wouldn't have been working as a telemarketer. He did think that she was a smart dog, and she could have learned a bunch of tricks if she wanted, but she clearly had no interest, as if learning tricks was beneath her. By his account though, she was mostly just a normal dog, that played with other dogs by chasing them, and killed a couple birds and squirrels due to being territorial. Moving on to discuss how she died, John says that it was also sadly normal, as he was out taking her for a walk, and she got hit by a car when he wasn't paying attention. People told him afterwards that he was lucky he didn't get hit, but he says he would have preferred it, as maybe he wouldn't have died from the impact like Maddie did. He was jaywalking, and he doesn't blame the driver, but he couldn't stop crying at the time. He picked up her body, went back home and grabbed a shovel and her favorite blanket. He buried her in his backyard in a spot where the shade of the trees didn't reach. Shortly after, he was going to kill himself by jumping off a bridge, although he doesn't know if he actually would have gone through with it. He was interrupted by suddenly seeing copies of Maddie everywhere, all barking at him and trying to get through the gate on the bridge to where he was standing. He figured he was losing his mind, but he ended up later at a dog park, as he thought that he wanted to see some more dogs before dying. Every dog at the dog park was of course a border terrier, all running to greet John, which caused quite a ruckus since the other owners could clearly see their dog suddenly transforming. He knew at that point that they were all in fact his former pet, and one came up and gently bit his hand. He fainted at this point, and by the time he recovered, he was in Foundation custody. John asks the doctor if the transformation process hurts the dog in any way, and he's assured that it does not. He then asks if the Foundation is going to hurt them, as he's not stupid and knows that an organization like this would dissect the dogs to find out how they tick. He begs them not to though, as he doesn't want any dog to be hurt because of him. He also asks if he can spend some time with one of the changed dogs, as he didn't even get a chance to tell her how good of a girl she was for being magical. Years later, during a routine visiting session between John and a transformed dog, the dog suddenly transformed back into a golden retriever, while still being in John's presence. It would seem that John is no longer anomalous since this point, and SCP-2420 has been declared neutralized. An interview was conducted right after this incident, and John says that during the visiting session, everything was normal as they were lounging there together, but he felt something weird. He's noticed that Maddie, or at least the transformed dogs the Foundation has been using, have been looking older. He asks how long he's been here, thinking it's been six years, but it's actually been ten. He doesn't think it's actually been ten years for Maddie, since he only sees her for six hours a week, but it's likely time doesn't work the same for her. During the session, Maddie knew that the visiting time was almost over, 
So she hopped off the couch, licked his hand, bit it, and looked him in the eyes. He knew at this point that it was going to be the last time he would see her. He doesn't know how he and Maddie managed to make this anomaly work, but it must have been hard for her. She let go of his hand, barked once impatiently, grinned, and then transformed back into the golden retriever in a moment. He asks at this point if the Foundation is now going to suck out his memories and dump him back in the real world, but the doctor asks if he would prefer that. John doesn't want to go though, as he doesn't want to forget about Maddie. He doesn't want to forget the lengths the two of them went to to spend more time together. He's worried that if he goes back into the real world, he'll just end up back on that bridge. The doctor asks if the previous 10 years, whether the medication, the anomaly, or just seeing his dog again has cured his depression. John says that of course Maddie didn't cure his depression, but it felt nice that someone loved him enough to do what she did. She's not magical though, she was just a dog. It's commonly said that a dog is man's best friend, and enough has been written in the past about the virtues of the dog that I don't really need to expound on it. There isn't really a grand lesson or moral that ties all these SCPs together, but it's more proof that the SCP universe covers a very wide range of themes and topics. While we all know that the cat is the better pet, there's no denying the positive impact that dogs have had on human life.